Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gratzel here. And in today's video, we're going to talk about layer masks. So layer masks are a great feature and probably one of my favorite features of Photoshop. So the great thing about Photoshop is it provides you tools that allow you to edit photos and create graphic works, but it gives you the option to do it non-destructively. And what that means is if you do something to a photo, like use the eraser tool and you erase a part of an image, you're literally deleting those pixels and they're gone forever. It's a destructive process. When you crop something, you're cutting off those pixels and it's a permanent thing. You can't get those pixels back. So there are tools in Photoshop that allow you to do some editing non-destructively, meaning you can quote unquote cut things or hide things but those pixels are still there. They're just hidden temporarily. And the layer mask is one of the ways that we do that. So I really like that tool quite a bit. It makes things visible and invisible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate just some of the basics of the layer mask. There are endless things that you can do with layer masks and you can get super, super creative with it. I'm not gonna go real deep into it. I just wanna show you the basics of where to find it and how to use it and how it works. And just a few little tips on like, hey, here's some things you can do with it. But I'm not going to go into too much detail. There are endless tutorials out there to show you how to use the layer mask in much deeper ways. But we just want to learn the basics of it. So looking at this image right here, I want to take this figure and I want to cut them out and I want to put a new background in there. So I've got this idea of I'm going to have a poster for my classroom that tells kids they got to dream big. You know, the sky's the limit. So I've got this like teenage figure. Uh, person and I've got this really cool colored sky background. So I want to put her on this background. So what I can do is I can select this person and cut them out and paste them in the background, but that would kind of be destructive. So what I'm going to do is a layer mask. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my quick selection tool. And if you watch one of my previous videos, we talk about some of the selection tools that are in here and that might help you with some of this. Uh, this is a complex figure that we want to cut out. So the quick selection tool I find will be the best option for that. So I'm gonna use my selection tool and I'm gonna go around the figure. So I'm kind of going around the edge and you can see again, that quick selection tool, once it figures out what pixels you want, it kind of jumps to those different areas rather quickly. I can jump around. Hold down my space bar, brings up my hand tool. I can scroll down a little bit if I need to, don't need to. I thought there was more down there. There we go. You can see some little areas that are still missing. Kind of go around the edge. Now, normally I would zoom in and check my edges quite a bit just to see if there's anything missing like that. But I'm gonna, just for our purposes for this video, I'm showing the layer mask. So I don't want to go too into detail. But yeah, I would definitely kind of go around the edges a little bit more and double check this little spot here. I'm going to switch to the minus and then bring that because I want that cut out. Okay. Oh, jump too far. So I'll go back to the minus and bring that back in. There we go. And touch up some of those little areas. So again, I'm not going to get too detailed with it. I'm not making a final piece, but this is just for an example. So we'll be happy with that. So what I can do now is I'm going to add a layer mask. So if I go to my layers panel, you can see at the bottom, there's this black square with a little white dot. That is the quick shortcut to the layer mask. If I were to just click on that button, it does exactly what the layer mask does. It creates this separate little image box that's linked to the photo. And you can see now whatever I had selected, the girl, there's like a little white silhouette of her in here. And here's the thing with layer masks, black hides and white reveals. So everything that's black hides everything in that image and whatever is white reveals. So it's making visible and invisible. So it's making invisible the background and visible my selection or what's in there at white. This is really helpful as I'll show you when we use the brush tool, making sure you have the right color to bring things back or to continue to hide stuff. So that's a really quick way to just make a layer mask. I'm gonna hit, take a step back and bring my selection. Let's show you another way. So if I go to my layers drop down menu at the top here, you'll see I've got some options for layer mask. So I can do reveal all, which would be, it would just give me a solid white 
layer mask because white reveals, right? I can do a hide all, which is just going to give me the same thing, but it'll be an all black layer mask. So it would just hide everything. Or you got these options here, reveal selection or hide selection. So let's say I wanted to hide the figure and just have the background. If I clicked on that, you'd see it would make the figure black hiding her. And then it would leave the background white revealing that part. So depending on what you're doing with your design, I might have found it easier for me to select the background rather than the figure. So in that case, I would do reveal, hide selection and it would hide the background and reveal that figure. The last way that you can do a selection, uh, it's one of the newer features in Photoshop 2020. You have the select and mask option at the top. So once you've used the selection, you can click on that. And this just allows you to do some detail work, some cleanup. So maybe you want to do some refined edges, if you got some hair or some detailed pieces, uh, whatever it might be. But once you're done, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see you have an output option. And right now it just says output to selection. If I clicked OK, it would just be back to that regular image with the marching ants around it. But if I click on this drop down menu, you can see I've got options for a layer mask. Or what I would like to do is a new layer with a layer mask. And I click OK. And what that does is same thing it does before when I just clicked on the layer mask button, but it just duplicated it. So this is really nice when you're getting into detail. Like if she had no hood or beanie on it, just hair, there's a lot of little edges that I might want to clean up. So I go into the select and mask. But what's nice is I can jump to a layer mask right away with that. So it's a great feature. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in my cloud backgrounds or my skies. So open up this image. If yours is locked, go ahead and click on that lock to unlock it. Go to my move tool. I'm just going to click and drag and bring this guy over and drop it on top there. Okay, now that I've got my background image there, I want to just make sure to move it uh, behind the figure. So I can just click and drag that layer below, and now it is behind my figure. Okay, so real simple ways to do that. One thing you can check out too, let's say I wanted to, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Let's say I wanted to remove her legs and make it just kind of look like her body is kind of floating in the clouds a little bit. So I'm going to go and click on my layer mask. And this is really important. If you notice, there's these little brackets around the corners of my layer mask. That is telling me what thumbnail is active because I can click on my image and you can see those brackets move. But I want to make sure I'm on my thumbnail. And here's why. So if I go to my brush tool, remember black hides and white reveals. So I want to hide this part of her legs, right? If I'm selected on the image, if I the brackets are on the image, and I go to paint, you can see white is the foreground color. It's just painting white on that image, right? So I want to make sure that I'm selected on the actual layer mask. Now make sure black is the foreground color. My brush is a little small, so I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Those bracket keys. And now I'm going to paint over that layer mask, and you can see I'm hiding her legs in this area, part of it. So using that brush tool, making sure the foreground color is black to hide the area that I want to hide. And you'll also notice I have a really sharp edge with my tool there. So with the layer mask, the brush tool works just like it would if you were painting with it. So if I were just painting a color, we're painting and drawing shapes with the brush tool, it works the exact same way. And I'll show you what I mean. If I go up to the top here and I click this drop down, here's the control panel, right? I can change the size of my brush and also the hardness. So if I wanted a softer edge, right? Maybe I wanted to float in the clouds a little bit. So I wanted to make it look like there's some clouded figures there. I can paint around the edge now and I've got a softer look, softer edge. So you can change the softness and hardness of your brush when you hide and reveal things just like you would with the regular brush as though you were painting with it. A couple other cool features with that is you've got in your control panel here with your brush tool selected. Remember, we talked about opacity and flow as well, too. So how transparent is your brush? So I can do the same thing on my layer mask. I could make the part that I'm hiding a little transparent. So let's say I wanted to Maybe have the clouds look like it's coming through on her hoodie in the on her hoodie part here under her jacket. So I can paint a little bit on there. So I'm hiding with that black, but because I have the opacity down, 
it's not solid black. So it's kind of like you get a little bit of the background and then you still get the image that's over the top. So you can do some really cool effects with that. So the transparency of that selection tool, that brush can make it a little bit lighter. So now it looks like it's kind of fading in a little bit and coming into uh, her fabric. This is a great way that people use for double exposure. A good technique for that is adjusting the opacity. You can also adjust the flow of your brush, which is how much of that ink, quote unquote, ink comes out. So right now, 100% of that ink is coming out, but you can drop that flow down really low as well too. And this just limits even more, gives you more control on how much actually comes out at a time. So you can see it's taking a lot more brush strokes for me to get that to be transparent because I've got the opacity down and the flow down quite a bit. Now let's say I don't like any of that and I wanna go back to where I had it, crank my opacity up to 100, my flow up to 100, and I'm gonna switch my brush colors from black to white because I wanna reveal and just go back and I can paint all that back in. And just like that, it's all back to where it was. Let's say I wanna temporarily hide my layer mask and I wanna see the original image again because maybe I wanna bring something back. I just don't know where it's at. So if I hold on the shift button and I click on my layer mask, you'll see I get this red X and it's hiding that layer mask temporarily. So you can see now, oh, maybe I wanna bring out this bolt right here. So I'm gonna kinda of make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm gonna hover over that, okay? So I know where that's at kind of, and I'm gonna go Hold down shift again, and then I'm gonna come back in and boom, where's that bolt at? It's like right about there. So now I know where that was at. So it's just a quick way, hold down shift, click, you can hide the mask, hold down shift, click, and bring it back really, really quickly. I'll show you guys one more technique that we can do with layer masks. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer here, and I'm gonna do a new adjustment layer and do a solid color. And um, let's do an eyedropper. We're gonna pick maybe a blue and then we're gonna go a little bit lighter with it. And I'm gonna do a little bit more grayish blue with it. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Let's do that. So I got a new fill layer, but you'll notice anytime we do an adjustment layer, we always get a layer mask with it, which is kind of a nice feature because then we can hide certain things that we want. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this layer mask. I'm going to hide that little bolt that I pulled out for that last demo. Right, And what I'm gonna do is, let's say I want to make a selection on this solid color layer that's the same as this figure. So what I can do is I can hover over my layer mask, hold down the Alt button, and click and drag it down over this new layer mask. Replace layer mask, hit yes. And what it did is it made a new layer mask based on that original selection really cool feature so now what i can do with this one is i, I can bump it over take this layer i'm going to control t and i'm going to bump it All right so now i can create this really cool effect of like you can see this little perfect silhouette of that figure right there now what i can do is i can hold down alt and i can duplicate that layer drag it up so i hold down alt and i click and drag in a layer i can duplicate it and then let's say I want to change this color. So I'm gonna double click on that little swatch there. I'm gonna hover over and get one of these little cool pink colors in. Hit okay. And you can see it changed that, right? Because we slid that over, but I'm going to hit control T and now I'm gonna slide it the other direction. So I can get a little bit of a kind of a silhouette on that side. So just kind of a really cool effect, right? You can do a little, vibrations you can keep doing this over and over if you wanted to get it look like it was vibrating that figure on either side so really fun stuff that you can do with that just by using that selection so again we'll held down the clicked on the layer mask held down alt and click and dragged it to a new layer mask and it brings that selection back so another really cool thing you can do with layer mask to make a quick shortcut for an original selection well that's all we have for today's tutorial on layer masks uh, and we will see you next time with our next tutorial.